Okay, it's 12. Good afternoon. Um, this morning, as you know, the Secretary General spoke at the Security Council's open meeting on COVID-19 vaccination. He said that vaccine equity is the biggest moral test before the global community. Progress on vaccination has been widely uneven and unfair, with just 10 countries having administered 75% of all COVID-19 vaccines. Meanwhile, more than 130 countries have not received a single dose. Mr. Guterres warned that if the virus is allowed to spread like wildfire in the global south, it will mutate again and again. New variants would, could become more transmittable, more deadly, and potentially threaten the effectiveness of current vaccines and diagnostics. This can prolong the pandemic significantly, enabling the virus to come back to plague the global north and delaying the world economic recovery. The Secretary General called on the G20 to set up a task force to create a global vaccination plan to bring together all those with the required power, scientific expertise, and production and financial capacities. He said that the he said that the G7 meeting later this week can help create the momentum to mobilize the necessary financial resources. And also speaking at today's meeting was UNICEF's executive director, Henrietta Four. She asked council members for their support in these areas. First, to urge member states to ensure that everyone is included in national vaccination plans, regardless of the legal status or if they live in areas controlled by non-state entities. Second, on a global ceasefire at minimum for a humanitarian pause for the duration of the vaccine de delivery. And lastly, to help UNICEF restart stalled immunization campaigns for other diseases. Uh, two events to flag for you uh, for later this week. As you know, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, the Secretary General and the Executive Director of the UN Environment Program, Inger Anderson, will brief you on the triple emergencies of climate biodiversity and pollution, which are the focus of the latest report by UNEP. The Secretary General will be here in this room. Uh, for those of you who wish to attend in uh, person, I think Anka is dealing with the attendance issue. Uh, Ms. Uh, Anderson will be uh, beamed in uh, from uh, outside of New York. Uh, the Secretary General will make opening statements. She will make opening statements. He will take a few questions, and then she will remain uh, virtually here to answer more questions on the report. On Friday at 3 p.m., the Secretary General will take part live in a virtual conversation with U.S. Presidential Envoy for Climate, Change, for Climate John Kerry, and that is to mark the United States' re-entry into the Paris Agreement. The chat will be part of the opening session of the UN Association of the United States Virtual 2021 Global Engagement Summit. Uh, you can watch uh, that live at uh, on our webtv.un.org. We will share with you uh, under embargo the SG's opening remarks for tomorrow as well as his remarks for Friday on the climate um, for the uh, event with the, for the U.S. reentry into the Paris Agreement. Just in a new senior personnel uh, announcement to share with you, the Secretary General is appointing Usha Rao Monari of India as Under Secretary General and Associate Administrator of the UN Development Program, otherwise known as UNDP. The Secretary General expresses his gratitude and appreciation to Murad Waba of Egypt for his commitment as Associate Administrator at Interim for th and his 30 years of service uh, in the United Nations. He also wishes to extend his appreciation uh, to Tege Getu of Ethiopia for his significant contributions to the development agenda as UNDP's Associate Administrator. As senior advisor to Blackstone's infrastructure group, Ms. Raul Monari is an investment professional with almost 30 years of investment experience, particularly in the infrastructure area. Her full bio is on the interweb. Uh, turning to um, uh, an update on the Ebola situation. Uh, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, vaccination teams are working in the northeast of the country. WHO and UNICEF, as well as other partners, are mobilizing to support the response, rehabilitating treatment centers and boosting contact tracing capacity. Communication campaigns are also helping combat misinformation among local population to promote a safe vaccination. In Guinea, our UN team started a four-day mission today to start to assess the situation in the southeastern part uh, of the of uh, Nizere 
uh, Nizerikore area, the first where the first case of Ebola was report uh, reported. The mission is led by the resident humanitarian coordinator, Vincent Martin, with representatives of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, FAO, and the World Food Program, as well, of course, as the World Health Organization. Less than 24 hours after the official declaration of the epidemic, uh, the UN, UN's Humanitarian Air Service, with logistical support from the World Food Program, organized a first humanitarian flight to the area. It carried personal protective equipment for healthcare personnel, assistance kit for infected people, and disinfection equipment. The UN delegation met with local authorities as well as community leaders. They also took part in a crisis meeting organized by national authorities to roll out a rapid contact tracing mechanism to assess the spread of the disease and establish an effective response plan. This includes emergency vaccination distribution, case management, crisis communication, and help with border management. Quick note on Somalia from the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, which said today that more than 2.6 million people in the country are expected to be extreme food insecurity. Poor rainfall, flooding, desert locusts are the main contributing factors. The situation could worsen through the middle of the year, barring large-scale and sustainable humanitarian assistance. From July to December of last year, aid reached more than 1.8 million people per month on average in parts of Somalia. This large-scale humanitarian government support helped to minimize the magnitude of the crisis. However, funding is needed and urgently or to boost efforts to reduce the new food security threats the country is currently facing. Um, Secretary General has congratulated Karim Khan on his election as the next prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. Uh, the Secretary General firms the continued support and cooperation of the UN under the relationship agreement between the UN and the ICC. Um, and, well, To uh, just to end on some good news, uh, though no, uh, no, on the honor roll per se, we are very thankful for our friends in Cyprus, uh, in the Philippines, and in France who have paid up their uh, budget dues in full, which brings the rota up to 46 states. Okay, uh, Celia and then James. <laughs> I give myself a break here before. <laughs> I know, sorry. At a meeting of the G5 Sahel countries, mm -hmm. President Macron said that France will not reduce the number of its so uh, soldiers in Mali. But at <coughs> the same time, the population is asking the French soldiers to leave because the security situation is worse than before their arrival. What could the mission do to diffuse the rising tension between the population and France. Look, uh, I, I'm in no uh, position to assess that relationship. What I can tell you is that uh, in Mali, what the UN presence on the ground is trying to do is to continue to help foster a political dialogue, a political uh, the implementation of the agreements that have already been signed to bring peace and stability uh, to Mali. I mean, that is the best solution for the people of Mali. Yes, but if the mission doesn't do anything, it will have an impact on the mission. Well, the mission will, you know, the, the mission through its, uh, and the UN presence through its humanitarian work, through its development work, um, and obviously through its peacekeeping work, is trying to improve the lives of the Malian uh, people. Uh, but the for stability and calm to return to Mali, a big part of that responsibility lies on the shoulders of Malian leaders themselves. Mr. Bayes, and then Ray. Staying in West Africa, um, Nigeria, um, um, there 27 students have been abducted. The UN's reaction? We call for their immediate uh, release. Uh, attacks on, on schools, on children, are abhorrent uh, and need to be condemned in the strongest terms. Large protests in Myanmar. Um, any update on the UN's engagement with that country on the special <coughs> envoy and her movements on any calls the Secretary General may have made? Uh, the special envoy continues her, her contacts, uh, trying to, to move forward on a, on a possible visit. There's nothing to, um, there's been no, no change 
as far as I'm aware of. We can, she continues her efforts. Our colleagues on the ground are, are reporting on these large-scale uh, demonstrations. We continue to be worried uh, about the state of the country, uh, frankly, and, and the need for the military uh, to reverse uh, to reverse course and listen to the uh, and implement the democratic will of the of the people of Myanmar. Final question from me for now. Um, uh, Uganda, you've expressed your concern about human rights abuses mm -hmm. in Uganda. You've expressed your concern about possible abductions in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Wine, the opposition politician, today um, took a um, petition on this very mm -hmm. subject to the UN office in Kampala. While doing so, his delegation seems to have come under attack, including the press that were covering it, and some of the press that were covering the peaceful um, delivery of a petition um, had to be hospitalised. The UN's reaction? Well, I will look into what are, as you said, rather disturbing reports. Uh, we'll check with our colleagues on the ground. They have not reported anything up to, uh, to us, but it is clear that journalists need to be allowed to do their work wherever and whenever. Ray. Thank you, Stefan. I have a question regarding the COVAX initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any numbers to share with us, like how, how much money the initiative uh, has raised until now and how much money it, it, they need? Thank you. Yes. On um, what I have on the COVAX is that the act, the act accelerated, the Support for the COVAX facility has been uh, outstanding, and more, but more is needed. We need right now $5 billion to meet uh, the, the uh, target. How much is the uh, let me get you the, let me get you that full, that full figure. Okay. Uh, all right, any questions in the chat? Let me look. Uh, Uh, James Reinald, you have a question. Hi there, yes, Stefan. Thanks so much. Um, I was listening to the Security Council meeting, and Mr. Guterres suggested um, that the G20 create some emergency task force yeah. to, to arrange vaccines, uh, get everywhere. I couldn't understand. Why is that a job for the G20? Why isn't it that something that the UN wants to take the lead on? Well, the, the G20 has the financial resources, uh, the economic power, and the scientific uh, the, the, the scientific know-how. If you look at the G20, it's basically all the countries where vaccines are being produced. It's where the where the money is. This is this is an issue of money, right? This is an issue of of putting of putting cash uh, behind uh, behind statements, and it's an, an issue of of the largest economies and those who produce the vaccines to coordinate uh, their efforts. This would be done, obviously, uh, with the aim of supporting the UN's efforts on COVAX, supporting the UN's work uh, on the ground. But I think the Secretary General uh, is being um, is being very realistic as to see where, where the resources are, in, in a way, uh, not unlike John Dillinger. But they're just, um, uh, you, it's just a different intergovernmental format. I mean, all those G20 countries are all members of the United Nations. I don't but think I think the, 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 the G20, it's not about, it's not about control. It's about, uh, it's about efficiency. And we've seen the G20, since its uh, creation, uh, take the lead on issues having to do with the global economy, having to do with with resources, so we feel it's a it's a it's a natural place for coordination on the financial side and on the scientific side to be done very clearly in full support of the World Health Organization's work, of the UN's work, and what we're, we can uh, what we hope to be able to achieve on the ground. Okay, um, Sarah Walton, and then we'll go to Evelyn. And by the way, all the the ACT numbers are on online on the WHO platform, so you you can dig down in there. Uh, Sarah, hi Stefan, thank you. Can you hear me? I can. 
Lovely. Um, on Myanmar, the um, UN Special Rapporteur has warned for the potential of you know, a sudden increase in violence there. Given that, uh, does the Secretary General have any hope that the Security Council might return to this issue in the near future? Well, we definitely hope, first of all, I would say we share those concerns. Uh, but we would definitely hope for continued uh, interest in the situation in Myanmar by the Security Council and continued action and strong, uh, a strong voice and unified voice coming out of the Security Council um, on the situation in Myanmar. Okay, uh, Evelyn? Hi, Steph. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Excuse me. Uh, is there any update on Yemen on the Houthi uh, offensive to uh, no, uh, the general Houthi offensive and how it affects the UN aid distribution? No, uh, no, no updates on the situation in Marib, uh, which continues uh, to be a source of worry uh, for us. I think, as we've been underscoring, um, the, the the fighting uh, there risks creating a new wave of internally displaced people who've already been uh, displaced, and of course, uh, is not conduce is not conducive uh, to more political talks. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I don't see anything else uh, in the chat, but if you have a question, Stefano. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, it's a question I asked you a month ago. Now it's uh, seven months um, the death of uh, Mario Pachola. And uh, unfortunately, especially the family is not satisfied with um, what's happening. They even uh, use the, the word omerta, that probably is a word that everybody knows. It's a word when, the, when you don't want the truth to come out, the mafia is a word. Uh, so there is anything that you can uh, say from the UN to help the people that want the truth from Mario Pachola that remind everybody was working for the United Nations in Colombia. Look, first of all, we we share uh, and understand the anguish of of the family, which is com more more than understandable. Uh, what I will say is that we continue to work very closely uh, with the relevant national authorities, whether it's the Colombian authorities or the Italian authorities, who have the primary uh, responsibilities for these uh, criminal investigations, and we will continue to do so. Mr. Bayes, you look like you want to say something, or at least ask something. Actually, it's sort of more say something. It's, it's not really a, a, a proper substantial question, but it's about uh, scheduling. Um, we have a Yemen meeting tomorrow. You mm -hmm. mentioned that we might have a stakeout with the special envoy. How is that proceeding? Uh, that's a good question. I need to, I need to check. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Varma, do you want to say something so we can do a wave? Sure. Go ahead and wave. Thank you, Stefan. 